Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in again. And just got off the water here at Table Rock Lake today. Uh, Johnny and I did a, uh, a show for the Fish the Moment YouTube channel, our, uh, our deep versus shallow challenge here on Table Rock. And uh, you guys have to check that out. It'll be up probably the next week or so on fishthemoment.com. Should be a good time, should be interesting. And today, I actually driving back from the lake made me want to do today's video. Uh, on how does recreational boating traffic affect bass because Table Rock Lake was absolutely covered up with recreational boating traffic today. It was a freaking zoo out there. R absolutely ridiculous. Um, man, I can remember back when, you know, my mom and dad used to take me to vacation on Table Rock down here back when I was in grade school. And even like in the middle of summer, like right now, you, j you, you maybe saw two or three boats out on the lake but it's just unbelievable how uh, hammered the lake is getting, not only from recreational boating traffic, but fishermen as well. So today was a prime example of it. Um, you know, the lake was covered up with boats. Uh, you know, during the challenge today, I had to deal with that. And I sort of wanted to have a little discussion about that, maybe give you guys some tips and maybe some type of an understanding on how uh, the, just the boat traffic will affect the the bass behavior sorry about the bumpy road here but anyway there okay there's a couple different factors to this um, first of all I want to say yes it does have a big impact on fish biting bass I think what you know a lot of people you know may or may not realize but you know bass are masters of their environment and they adapt well and they evolve fast they evolve very quickly and from the time a bass is born if it's born in 20, you know, right now, the last, you know, 30 years from the time it's born, it hears motor traffic. It hears outboard traffic. It hears trolling motors. It hears electronic things. Those are part of a bass's environment, um, just like anything else. You know, just like floods are, just like low water conditions are, just like any type of weather variant. You know boats are part of their environment that they just probably accept as not known any better and what has happened with that is since bass evolve quickly to their environment and they adapt quickly bass have learned to basically feed accordingly to how much traffic's on the water and that traffic can come in the form of just like i said motor noises or whatever noises that a boat makes so one of the things that you're going to notice is, and you notice this probably if you guys fish the weekend versus the week, the fish always bite better during the week, always. And the reason that is is simply because the noise decibel levels down. You know, those fish simply aren't as skittish, they're not as, you know, spooky, they're not as afraid. And that's what motor noise does to them, guys. Recreational boating traffic, jet skis, all these big cruisers are running up and down the lake. You know, I think that it affects the bass the same way it's like a, a bad cold front affects them. You know, after a bad cold front, everybody knows that the bass sort of shut down. They just don't, they're, they don't chase. They're not near as active. And that's the same thing that happens. They, they automatically, instinctively know when they hear more noise from outboards and, and boats, just it's not a prime feeding, you know, time for them. And I've noticed that too. And, it was, and that's the way it was today. It was a good example of that. You know, you have windows of that. You've got windows... You know, they bite before the boat traffic gets out there. You know, they bite after they come off a little bit. I mean, that's just sort of the cycle that they're in. And there's some there's some practical factors even below, below that. Because take, for example, today, you know, I was flipping bushes. And after about 10.30 or 11 o'clock this morning, the boat traffic muddied up the banks I was fishing. I mean, it basically turned them that, you know, that churned up... Uh, you know boat wake or washing on the shoreline and you know the sedimentation floats away from the shore so a lot of the water clarity that i was fishing that was normally you know four to five foot visibility was re reduced to 12 inches maybe two foot visibility by about 10 30 or 11 o'clock and in a lot of situations that's a negative sometimes it can help but it doesn't help normally if the water muddies up and you have a lot of artificial wave action that's, in create, that's created around that. It, sometimes it could help them. I mean, sometimes if you're on some type of a moving bait bite and if the 
bank angles are right and, and the type of bank that you're fishing is suitable for it, sometimes you can capitalize on that. But in my situation, flipping bushes up on the bank, it shut those fish down. It really did. And that's one of the, the, ca the casualties of, of recreational boating traffic. So here's the thing that I would suggest on the guys is um, there are certain areas of the lake that simply receive more traffic than others from these cruisers and the jet skis. And that's normally close to your bigger marinas. Anytime you've got a big marina or a fairly large launching ramp, you're gonna have a lot of traffic from these big cruisers and these weekend dudes um, within you know a couple miles of the ramp there. So my advice is if you're gonna fish those areas, try to hit those areas early in the morning, right off the bat before, you know, everybody else gets out there in the big boats you know fish those areas that you feel are going to get affected by the wave action and the sedimentation floating get that out of your way after that happens guys that's when you need to head either to some offshore structures you know at way out off the bank where those fish are deep or you need to head more in the upper creek and the upper river arms that traditionally don't have quite as many uh, boats on it if you can get to an area where it's a little bit dangerous to get to, where there's some stumps and those guys aren't dragging, you know, skiers behind the boat all the time, that's even that much better. So it sort of requires a strategy a little bit. And it's actually it's something that you're going to have to, every angler out there is going to have to adopt, adapt to this because our lakes are just going to get more crowded all the time, you know, from anglers and from recreational boaters both. So I think one of the big important things you have to remember as an angler is, you know, consider recreational boating traffic as part of your variable that you've got to deal with. The same that you would consider, you know, looking at the weather forecast. That's a big deal for that. I mean, if, you, if, you, if you're fishing a tournament over the weekend or you're going to go fishing over the weekend, you've got to consider that, you know, the impact that they're going to have on this, specifically between the months of like May and first part of October is going to be a factor. So anyway, just wanted to throw that out there a little bit, guys. Like I said, big big takeaway from this I can give you is, is hit those places you know is going to get a lot of traffic early, you know, then get up in the skinny water or way out offshore. That's going to give you your best advice. But uh, try to stay away from those areas to get a, a lot of traffic coming through there, you know, during the prime period of the day. But uh, I, I don't like it, man. I, I don't like it. Like I said, my ideal day on the water is if I go out there and don't see another human being anywhere or house or anything. I, I, I just want to launch my boat and go out there and not see any sign of civilization whatsoever. But unfortunately, I don't get that too often unless I go out to Lake Mead or Lake Powell. And then uh, you can have that once in a while out there. So that's today's tip, guys. Hope you guys are doing well again. Uh, like I said, if you haven't had a chance to subscribe to the channel, please do so. We're coming up on a big 40,000 subscriber giveaway probably in a week or so. And uh, hopefully uh, everybody will check in and be part of that. So we'll talk to you all later. See you.